which all right welcome everybody to my fest uh, i'm Mahabeli from the american university in cairo and this is the syllabus accessibility jam um we've got two guests uh, with us today who are gonna lead facilitating this session uh, sandra gazes who will i will let her introduce herself and the sr author who's an undergraduate student at auc and i'll let him introduce himself and just to let you know uh, welcome senate just to let you all know we're recording, the live captions are on if anybody needs. This is the automatic uh, live captions, which hopefully will help if you would like to turn them on for yourself. Um, and what we'll do is, um, I'll, I mean, first of all, I'll let Sandra and, and Yesu introduce themselves. We'll do a very quick Mentimeter exercise to get to know you a little bit and what you're what you're interested in, in knowing today. And then Sandra will lead us through a sort of a framework for working with accessibility. Um, we'll listen to some of your questions, and yes, it has some case studies as a student of accessibility um, challenges that he's faced with uh, some people's syllabus. But if you have, uh, and let us know, let me know, we'll, we'll give you a chance to say if you have a particular accessibility question for us. Thank okay. you, Maha. Thank Sandra, you. Sandra, go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, my name is uh, um, Alexandra, they call me Sandra, and I'm in charge of the disability unit at the AUC. We worked a lot with the disability team with the IT people to actually, and we face a lot of issues in regards to this topic in particular. That's why I'm, I'm very happy to be with you. I'm glad that this is uh, one of the topics that are being put on the table. I'm glad that Yeser also is with us because this is, will give you a strong view in regards to how students actually face challenges, how to see if challenges in regards to accessibility and so forth. Yeser? Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sandra. Um, I'm, I'm Yasser Atif. Um, I'm from the American University in Cairo as well. I study um, currently. I study at the Department of English Literature um, as a, as a major with some um, concentration or, or or minors uh, linguistics and education. Um, like I am interested in the accessibility and disability topics in, in particular. So today's session, we hopefully will bring some of the challenges that students face, not from the not from the technical perspective, but from the educational perspective and student uh, uh, perspective when um, st a student encounters the syllabus. Hopefully, with the framework that we'll have to today, when in, in uh, the, the very beginning of the session, we'll have more. Uh, um, knowledge about um, accessibility and how we can go through this, the, the topic today. So um, I'll hand over to Dr. Maha to, uh, to continue with the, with the Mentimeter exercise. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Yasser and uh, Sandra for joining us today. So I, I put a link to a Mentimeter in the chat um, just to know a little bit more about you before we get going. So if you could click on that link or I'll, I'll give you the code. Um, I'll share my screen so people will be able to see the code if they want to do that on a different device. And the question is about your level of familiarity or experience with accessibility. I think it's always important to recognize that some of us uh, may have a lot more experience with this than others. So we have about 11 people, including Yasser, uh, Sandra, and myself. So I'm not answering it. So when we get around eight responses, I think I'm stuck. So, so far, there isn't anyone who's never worked on accessibility before from the people who answered. Uh, four people have started working on accessibility in the past like one or two years. We need to learn more. One person with three plus years of experience. Nobody who's part of their job is to support others except Sandra. I'm guessing, and having a disability or learning difficulty yourself, one person. And so there is one person who's never worked on accessibility. Yeah, that's okay. me. <laughs> okay, <Osama>. welcome. <laughs> welcome. So. You're in the correct place. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, but it's good that some people do have a little bit of experience and then those who do can give ideas also other than the, the ideas that we get from an expert. So the other question is when you when you think about accessibility, are there particular groups that you feel like you want to work on the accessibility of your teaching for? So, for example, yes, it uh, is signed up for my class next semester, inshallah. So right now I'm really focused on how do I make my class more accessible for visually impaired. Um, in general, I tend to get a lot of students who have something that I think is ADHD, but our accessibility, our, you know, our disability unit don't tell us exactly what they have, but I think that sometimes the students come and tell me. So ADHD, for example, is another thing that I'm 
So let us know on Mentimeter, like if there are particular groups you're interested in. Put the Mentimeter link again, because I think some people may have come after I put it in the chat. Okay, students with vision issues, all right. Neurodivergence, okay. And neurodivergence, of course, Sandra, that would include so many different categories, right? Yeah, definitely. So autism, ADHD. Uh, oh, I don't know, uh, dyslexia is considered a vision or, a, or no. neurodivergence? No. Which one, which one is it considered? It's not a vision, it's a learning okay. disability. Okay. Yeah, because one of my friends was telling me yesterday that his son thinks in a different way. He's not just dyslexic as in he has trouble reading, but he actually learns completely differently, which I didn't I didn't realize it was a thing. All right, um, so lots about visually impaired and uh, shy and demotivated. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I have dyslexia. And it's it would be considered that uh -huh. falls in the neurodivergent also. Yeah. yeah. It's not under the vision. No, yeah, that was vision. Yeah, I was asking about is it vision or neurodivergence, and I think Sandra was saying the same thing you were saying, Virginia. But thanks for uh, would would cognitive distortion okay. counts as well? Cognitive what? Distortion, cognitive distortion. That we're um, cognitive distortions is 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 a symptom, mm -hmm. okay? So and it goes with different uh, or or a lot of types of dis uh, disorders. So. It could be and it could not be. Okay. Because I can have, for example, uh, schizophrenia and I have uh, cognitive distortions or the, and that goes with a lot of things. And I can have a type of a learning disability and, and it can have some implications in cognitive distortions. So it depends what you mean by cognitive distortion. You know, things like, like very low self-esteem for no logical reason. Like the student, for example, is performing very well when they decide to uh, to participate, but uh, usually they feel bad about themselves, and this like hinders their ability to uh, to show, you know, how good they are, you know, something like this. Yeah. Like severe uh, levels of depression sometimes. But that's what I'm telling you. It's a symptom. Mm -hmm. So it is not under a, a um, I mean, you don't. Not every person who has a, a, a depression, for example, has cognitive distortions about the self. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not everybody who has, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. anxiety can go into, so it depends, it has a lot of varieties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm noticing something that I really liked, um, hidden disabilities and who am I forgetting is, uh, these are really, really interesting points and uh, in terms of how can you design a syllabus that is inclusive, even if someone doesn't have a reported or known disability, but they may have one that they're not letting you know about or they're not aware of. So that's interesting. There are a few things here that I don't think will be addressed in this particular session, like yeah. different cultures and weak internet connections and things like that. But I think when you design with an inclusive mindset, you may end up accommodating everyone with these things that are not necessarily disabilities or learning difficulties. Okay, so I have one more question for you and then Sandra will take the, will take the screen for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move on from these. Um, all right, so the next one is, if you have a specific question that you came here uh, seeking consultation on, please uh, t write it in here or if somebody else writes a question that you also want the answer to, you can upvote it with a thumbs up type of thing. Uh, you know, Sybil, we can we can do a whole session about unmotivated students, I think. <laughs> but so if anybody has specific questions, put them up in this uh, place. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep the, the Mentimeter going in the background, but not share it on Zoom. So whenever you have a question, add it in here. And then when Sandra is done giving us an overview of how to think about uh, accessibility, we'll come back to your specific questions. And does that sound like a good plan? Because then people have time to, uh, to, to put in their questions. And also, if Sandra says something that evokes for you a question, you can post it and then other people can look up. All right, so I'll stop sharing and uh, let Sandra share her okay. screen. Okay, I, 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 
I'm, I, I don't feel like we, and I agree, we agreed with the answer that we want this to be as interactive as possible. So uh, we were going to put like uh, for you some case studies in regards to uh, real challenges that were faced with um, um, by Esther with uh, in the classrooms in regards to the syllabus and the materials and so forth. But I wanted to give you a quick kind of base before we start anything and let me know what you think about this. Um, as I um, as I feel that we, we need to be on the same ground when we start uh, this um, uh, uh, training or session here. One of the things I want you to get to know the difference, this is um, in front of you is a slide that has the um, digital communication in text in regards to disabilities. And we have three terms, uh, terminologies that are, are, are sometimes very mis, uh, misunderstood or sometimes misused or, or, or. So we have something called accessibility, usability and inclusion. Okay, so one of the things that you, we need to know in regards to the difference between these three when we when we design our syllabus or when we think of accessibility in regards to digital accessibility uh, for uh, for nowadays students. So accessibility is when you when is anything in relate in relation to discrimination in regards to having equal uh, usage uh, floor. So how, how you are addressing certain accessible points when, when someone with a disability approaches you and tells you, I need this to be as accessible as possible. Usability is the basic design of products to be efficient, satisfying to the majority of population. Does not in necessary means that it will include someone with a disability. Inclusion on the other side is ensuring that everybody is included, including as, as, as much as possible and not actually um, falling between the cracks for any uh, digital um, um, uh, accessibility issues in it. Okay. Okay, so one of the things that you need to know is that, that goes with the barriers for inclusion is actually some people think that it comes from um, um, the faculty member only, and you have to know it does not include only the faculty member, it includes everybody within the same society or environment that actually is giving um, or, or, or are exposed to educational setting yet. So a weak policy, a weak framework, a weak um, 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 procedure can actually have a, a barrier to inclusion for accessibility. So this, I'm not gonna go into details. This was a big training that we did with, the, with, the, with other departments. So I just wanted to make sure that this is, it's, it's, it, there is a difference between having something accessible and there is a difference between having something with base usage of it. And there is a big difference in having inclusion for everything in regards to accessibility and disabilities, okay? The one that the, the, the frame we have in front of us, the, the page we have in front of us now is something called accessibility framework. And this is where uh, Yeser and I were gonna put for you some case studies to, to, to make you think of. Um, it has design, test, fix and monitor. And I believe this is one of the basic um, uh, things or a, a basic framework that if you follow as a faculty member, or not only faculty member, anyway, anyone who wishes to have an accessible, uh, accessible material, yet, you will be able definitely to reach a point of satisfaction in your work. So when you design and develop whatever you want, you have to make sure that it is up to the standards. You have to test what you have designed and don't presume that things are uh, good for the person in front of you or the person who needs um, uh, um, accommodations for a disability. And of course, you need to be flexible in regards to fixing the issues and the barriers identified during the testing period. And this is the testing and the fixing is where actually 
big part of it is where you and your, your student work together to make sure that things are going well. And when we need extra hand, this is when you reach out for your uh, IT members or accessibility team on campus or someone with a disability uh, office to actually help you make your, uh, your uh, material more accessible yet. And of course, a biggest part later on goes on monitoring what you have done, monitoring the contents, monitoring how it impacts the learning experience of the student and learning, uh, and not only the learning experience for the student, also monitor how it impacts you as a faculty and how you're, you're adapting to a different uh, teaching method, methods and how this is um, good and healthy for the overall uh, course contents, okay? Yes, sir, do you want to, to start? All right, I think so. we, we have five questions from people in the audience first. Okay. So do you think it's okay to address the, yes, sir, do you think it's okay if you address the audience questions? Uh, maybe take 15 minutes for Sandra and you to answer the audience okay, questions sure. and then yeah. we can do the breakout rooms. Go ahead, sure yes. thing. Sure thing. I just okay, wanted great. to elaborate on a point just uh, related to this framework, just to, to, to simplify it. Like in, in the in the in the fixing or the, the, the reviewing phase when you create mm. your, your syllabus, it's not really a big deal that you don't know this this whether this tool is accessible or not, if you are designing an, a tool for curation or annotation or whatever. And that's that's one of the real case studies that we're going to later on to talk about but it's that idea of uh, uh, thinking about the, the 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 easy navigation in that in that way as, for you as a as a as a faculty member and for your students you are not really teaching your students how to uh, learn how to use the tool but how to do the task of the curation and annotation and so on and so forth so the point here is that before even reviewing your 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 material you have just to um, get something really easy easily use, usable for, for 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 you as a person first and then it will be usable for your students let's uh, uh, um, take some of the questions because that's uh, I think will will get into will get us into more discussion. Yeah, so I'm actually going to start a question that maybe you you can answer best, Yasser. And the, this question is: uh, Are audio narrated slides actually helpful for someone with a visual impairment or impairment or reading difficulties? Um, well, if if those audio narrated slides are narrated by a human, like the presentation we just had from Dr. Alexandra, it's that way of yeah, understanding the content. But if you're just uh, turning on the, the immersive reader on, on the Microsoft or the or, or, or a screen reader like the one I'm using, it's not helpful because it, it took, it's not a human voice and it's very um, sophisticated to stop and then uh, uh, review the, the, the content or material. But it's, if it's explainable by a human being, uh, each point is stressed very well, and um, and it's the slides really describe like here there's a slide that has a photo of a person who wears so and so and so, or here the slide is so and so. So it's very yeah when it's explained well, it's it, it gets us into the the point of understanding. But it's also it also has to be inclusive. This doesn't um, um, alternate having the slide in an accessible material that the narration it's a it's a means of facilitation but it's not an alternative um, can i add something for this from a, a faculty point of view sometimes when i'm in my class and i'm teaching for example uh, um, an intro level course it's different than when i'm teaching a 300 or 400 level course because the slides are more re is are more rich in content, have a lot of demos, have a lot of things. So sometimes faculties feel that they can be overwhelmed in, in regards to reading every single detail of the, of the PowerPoints. So that's why I will always give um, my, power, my PowerPoint slides prior to my classroom with an over voice narrator, okay? So the, the student will be ready um, prepared when they come in and I start explaining what's on the, the, the screen, it will be like a double affirmation that things 
have been well um, uh, read for or, or prepared for the student. Okay, yes, sir. Um, but Sandra, the, the question here is um, if, so for teachers to, to audio narrate every single thing before they send it to students is, so yes, it was differentiating between the difference between the screen reader, which reads, I guess, an automated way versus something that's narrated by a human. Yeah. But then there's this other element of searchability. And I think yesterday you were saying that something like Panopto, because it has like sort of chapters, then you can go to the part that you want versus if something is just a linear narration of a like a video or something, yes. right? Yes. So yes. that kind of thing makes a difference. And that you're not yes. just narrating the text, but you're also describing the images in the way that you have alternative text as well. It also has a very good uh, i know that uh, uh, for for the auc at least it also has a, a, a note taking an accessible note taking box that students can they can attach their notes and when it, when they do so it's attached to the time stamp so when they go to the the time stamp available uh, the note is re appears on the screen but also uh, if the student has a total a total blindness they can download their notes as a, a word or as a pdf uh, uh, according to what they want really and when they do so as well it's a hyperlink so you ha they have the hyperlink for the recording attached to the document so i think that's a really uh, uh, a good tool for the student to navigate a specific portion of the lesson or the powerpoint and instead of really going over it uh, each and every time yes. from the very first to, to, the, to the very end I agree. thank you this one is for you and of course, if anyone in the chat also has solutions. So oral presentations and writing as two activities that some students suffer with in the classes, especially those with special needs. So what are some accommodations or ways of doing oral presentations and writing? So they're very two very different things, right? Yeah. What are some of the things, Sandra, that you suggest people would do to make their syllabus more inclusive on these things? When you say writing activities, you mean in-class writing activities, or I mean you you mean assignments that we take outside of classroom, in-class writing. So Nisma okay. saying in class, right? Because okay. I guess the anxiety and the time pressure. Yeah, yeah. Usually, um, uh, I'm sure Nisma has has also had experience in this with accommodations. We do we give accommodations for those who need one-on-one -on -one oral presentations. Okay, so you do the, and the tricky part here is when they take the one-on-one -on -one oral presentation and it's a group presentation, it differs. So they, the, the student actually must prepare the material with the group, prepare the slides, do their part, and then the actual part of standing in front of classroom and doing the presentation, you exclude the student and they do it in your office or uh, some, some faculty member request the student to record this and, and send it to them uh, before the presentation and so forth. The challenging part here will be uh, when the other students come and say, well, who will say the part of the oral presentation? So you as a, as a faculty member can just read the slides, uh, tell them to read the slides without explaining and go over it quickly without you telling the class, okay, this is a, uh, someone has an accommodation and they will not say it and so forth. Usually the, the, the students do not notice that there are two, three, four slides that are been rushed through. For the writing, um, 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 for the writing part, of course, I know that the um, especially uh, visually impaired they take double the time. Sah. So uh, visually impaired for accommodations, they take double the time. If you have a student that have only 20% or 30% for an in-class activity that is 10, 10 minutes, you give them a, a, a couple of minutes or so. But for visually impaired, if you feel that they you have been rushed through the assignments for the student in class assignments, you will definitely uh, eliminate the number of in class assignments given to students and replace it with an out of class assignment to uh, uh, to go through the two three missing assignments that they took to, because of the time frame. Okay, so, Sandra, sorry, Maha, can I uh, interrupt? Yes. Uh, yes. So um, I had a student who uh, told me that she w had an ADHD. She mm. doesn't. She didn't have an accommodation, mm. but it was very clear that 
I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a doctor, but it was very clear, yeah. She cannot sit like for some ample time to concentrate and write. It was very, very difficult for her. So I'm talking about these students that go unnoticed or that they are not diagnosed or, and they find it difficult to really concentrate for an hour to do a writing in class. And it's very essential part of the course. Uh, are there any techniques that I can help them adapt? Maybe, I don't know. So sometimes, uh, for example, all I can think of is uh, playing music for them uh, while not, they're not, writing. Not everybody, Some, sometimes music is very distracting. Mm. No, all what you can do is, of course, be very um, firm in regards to you need to get your accommodations, you need to finish your process, you need, you need, you need, so we can eliminate the, the, the thing of is she really doing this or is she pretending, is it really because of the hidden um, type of the disability, it's very tricky to actually uh, as assess the student correctly. So leave this part for us, we can help them. You can always reach out for us and make sure that we, of course, are on board together and, and we take it from there. Uh, as in class, till you get, till they get assessed or get their accommodations or so forth, because it takes a lot of time. Um, it's preferable that either you split the, the task into parts, Okay, or you make sure that she stays uh, at the core, not at the corner, aside, and, and make sure that she uh, hands. Um, for example, I had I has I had faculty member giving the the part of the writing in 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 page by page. Don't don't give it once. Okay, so you do the intro first, and then give it back to me, and then your uh, your uh, your uh, buddy, and then I don't know what you know. They 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 cut it into parts, so things are not overwhelmed. A repetitive breaks can be super super helpful in this. Every half an hour, you give two three minutes break. And that's why we say it's, we give also preferential reading, uh, seating, because we want them to be beside the door so they will not interrupt if they're back or they're at the side and keep going back and forth and so forth. Okay, thank you, Sandra. So there's uh, another question that's um, important but difficult. So this mm -hmm. is, uh, I think there are two people who are asking this question they think their syllabus is fairly accessible already but they keep wondering uh, who they're forgetting very good this is very common the feeling of am i good enough am i doing the correct thing am i uh, am i really playing it right am i inclusive enough and and you will never be able to answer this question so you will you will do whatever you want to do in regards to accessibility. We have, of course, the Blackboard Ally that can give you tips about the percentage of the accessibility of your course on Blackboard. You can always um, reach out for us or for the accessibility team or whatever. But at the end of the day, you never know who, who's your student body. You never know who's coming for you in this semester. But the thing that you know you can do is at the beginning of the class, say that I'm open to help everybody and support everybody. We do have um, a good team that can help me in this class make materials more accessible. Let me know during the, the, the class time if there are any issues or challenges that you're facing, please send them to me or come and talk to me and we will figure out a way to, to handle them. So it's an ongoing um, process. Yes, uh, I would like to add something that it is really um, um, like necessary to, to, to highlight, which is um, that nothing is 100% accessible because of the different needs. Uh, someone may be a visually impaired, but and, and two visual, you have two visually impaired students, or two, two blind students in your classroom. But both of them are not really one uh, one template, one standard. One um, you will you will not you will not really deal with them um, um, in 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 one manner. Just each one of them has different needs and and different spectrum of uh, of of uh, method of teaching. So the, the point, yeah, as, as, as mentioned, as Dr. Alexandra mentioned, that it's always, yeah, we, we, we follow the standards, the basic standards, and then we leave out the rest for the student to specify what they really uh, need in regards to um, the, uh, the material delivered. Like, for example, we deliver words. That's, that's the standard for material. But if a student needs it in a, like, uh, maybe large print, so we design it. 
because yeah we followed the standard but the different need is is, is responded to as of the the student request whenever the semester starts or the the academic year and and always yeah the, the, the repetitive uh, mentioning of of that you you are willing to help because some students with disabilities fear uh, to disclose it fear to say that uh, Hey, I have a problem. I have. Uh, I'm. I'm really um, uh, struggling. I'm. I'm suffering and so forth. So hence the repetitive, the repetitive uh, uh, times. You would say the more uh, like you need help, the more you come to meet me in office hours or whatever, the more you would find your student responsive. And I know that some students are unmotivated and and, and so on, but. Um, like this this will 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 help them like try to adapt with the course material and course content never fall into the trap of same disability same needs never mm -hmm. this is a big That's trap really a big trap that everybody yeah. falls into yeah but to say i've taught a blind student before doesn't mean the next blind student in your class is going to have not at all because you do also have a, I can't hear Sandra. I don't know if the problem is with me. No, I can hear. Okay. Okay. So actually, someone else who's a disability expert has just joined us, uh, Mustafa Adeya. Sandra, we can't hear you. I'm gonna I'm gonna text her on the phone. But the next quest, one of the other questions that we have. Um, and, and maybe yes, and Mustafa can help answer it while I try to figure out where Sandra is. Is, yeah. is there a checklist for going through one syllabus to ensure you're back? Yeah. Welcome back. Okay. Is, is there a checklist? This is another question. Is there a checklist for going through one syllabus to ensure ultimate access and inclusion? So we'll answer this question, then we'll go to breakout rooms to do the, the case studies that Yasser suggested. If you're using, there is a, 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 a the minimal checklist, yes, there is, okay, but as we said, and yes, it said, and it's not like the, uh, the, everything included, but we do have a checklist that we can share, uh, and we, and you can also um, in, uh, use the, uh, as I said, the Blackboard Ally, it's a beautiful tool, beautiful tool mm -hmm. on Blackboard. It helped me a lot. Actually, it gave me um, a color for the accessibility of my material on, 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 and it was beautiful. All my slides, everything that goes with the, yeah. And, uh, uh, and, 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 it, and the thing is that it gives you under each part that is not accessible, what to do and the steps how to do it so even if you have if you don't have the time yourself you can give it very easily to the ta to actually follow the steps and make it accessible and they re-evaluate your course again and and you see the coloring the colors coming better and better till it's all green yeah. okay no thank you, only Sandra. only it's only for blackboard yeah, it's only for Blackboard, so I don't know yeah. what other platforms would have. And also, it only checks what's in Blackboard, but any links outside it won't check your yeah. Google Docs. No, it has to be inside Blackboard, Blackboard, yeah. Yeah, so apparently Canvas has something similar as well. All right, so yes, that you had, um, I created a Google Doc out of the Word document you sent me with the list of case studies. Um, Maybe we can put people in three breakout rooms or something yes. to work on them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but before before doing that, I just would like to mention yes. also for writing that we have um, a very Turnitin also has something like Blackboard Alive. It has some some uh, accessibility guide that can be followed also for writing submissions and and, and uh, um, you know uh, on Turnitin people who are familiar with writing uh, will know that the, the peer feedback assignments that the amount the questions you insert in Turnitin and students give feedback to each other. This also has some accessibility because sometimes people attach their questions in uh, in in an image, and this this won't really work out with students with with visual impairment or disability. But uh, if they are attached as uh, 
words and students submit them into boxes or, or the, 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 the edits or the ones, the fields that can, the one can, can insert their answer to that would be really accessible. It's also helpful, right, turn in accessibility. Um, each university also has accessibility. So um, those toolkits uh, together, if they are collected, uh, can help and, 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 and can, uh, can can facilitate the way of designing the syllabus and uh, i love always to say that it's not a really stressful process it's uh, if, if each one of us do some some mistakes and and if i did a mistake this time i'll not repeat it once so nothing will come perfect 100 um, percent it's it's a try and end it's a try and error try and error try and, error. and we have the accessibility team on campus for you and you have uh, us the sds and you have your students to go back to yes i mean for yeah. people but not, not everyone i don't know a lot of people here are not from AUC, and I don't know if they have such an office in their institution. But, um, but that's, so, that's why I liked. Yeah. So yes, um, I put the link to the Google Doc okay. with our activities. I'm just going to show it to folks quickly before we go to the breakout rooms. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit wanna, of a reflection. Yes, it created this list for you all. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's a little bit of a reflection. We we just don't have to to run it one by one or something. It's it's a little bit of discussion. Um, just we we it's 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 um, a scenario that may fall into into one of the syllabi, and uh, like that that's to see how alternatives can go and how can we like adapt them into um, uh, a, 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 an equitable format for students or an equitable design. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can everybody see the Google Doc? I see there's several people on it. So you're going to need this in your breakout rooms. And we there's a table so you can, in your breakout rooms, as you discuss it, you can take notes and put them in the document. And while you guys are in the breakout rooms, what I'm going to do with Sandra and Yesir in the main room is we're going to look at the rest of your questions on Mentimeter and answer them. So you'll see the recording of the answers when you get the recording of this session. So it's a good use of time. You're having your discussion in the breakout rooms. We're answering the rest of the questions. You'll have those when you get the video. And then when you come back from your breakout rooms, you can sort of summarize back to us sort of what you guys discovered. Does that sound good? Anyone have questions? Uh, it's 1.40 here for us. So I think if in your breakout rooms you took 15 minutes, then we'd have about there. five minutes to share back. What, what would you like to do, Sandra? The checklist. Uh, I, I have Thank some you. resources here from my previous thing, so I'll put it to, for you to. Okay, maybe we can add them at the bottom of the Google Doc. What do you think? Okay, oh, I'll do that. I'll make okay. the copies. I'll copy it into the Google Doc. All right, I'll send everybody to the breakout room. So 15 minutes, and we'll see you back here again. All right. So while everybody is gone. Uh, Sandra, um, uh, yeah. I will, I will, yes. I will send you an email with mm -hmm. the resources I have for uh, from the uh, okay. from okay. my uh, training. Okay. All and, right. And, and put it on the uh, Google da. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not very good in. Uh, no worries. Copy pasting or things that takes me a lot of time. No. Okay. What are no the worries. questions? All right, so the first one that I'm seeing here, let me share the screen to make it a little bit easier. It's about if there are particular platforms that are known to be a good means of communication, best suit the visually impaired or are convenient for most, if not all students with special needs in general. I think that's a difficult question. Maybe there's some- Can you say it again, Manish? Like I, I particular yeah, the, the what? So I'll put it up on the screen Karen, if it helps. Uh, what technical technological tools or platforms or means of communication best suit the visually impaired or are convenient for most, if not all, students with special needs in general? That's someone. I think somebody's asking for a magic solution, which I guess doesn't exist. But there might be. Yeah, it seems to me that Microsoft is more convenient for visually impaired than Google Docs. From well, my experience uh, with ESIN, for it's, example. Uh, it's a little bit a tricky question. And I have to yeah, say but that. There are a lot of other things uh, that I worked with students with visual impaired 
uh, impairment and and it, they work fine the, like the 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 the, the google e portfolios like the yes. lower um the google sites yes ah the google one. sites and la, they, they, there are a lot of things that are accessible that's why i said it's, it's a tricky like microsoft okay. word uh, words and words and, and powerpoints are good mm -hmm. but you can't really deal with microsoft forms or teams so it's a little bit of variation that a student makes to to um, mm -hmm. make the best suitable to them like uh, google doc yeah is not accessible but microsoft word or the office online is accessible so we vary between those resources and uh, i always advise students and, and and colleagues to be flexible with that if you have oh. something that makes you comfortable so so this is comfort for you and and you will decide what is comfortable for you for example um there are some visually impaired who love google docs okay and uh, and who, they can deal with it really thoroughly and normally but i can't do to my uh, the, the slow down uh, uh, in, in my screen either makes me uncomfortable. So that, that's my need. That's my 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 way of, of communication to that. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and, and also uh, there are some general tools that are really agreed on such as the email. Someone cannot come and say the email is inaccessible. So we just communicate things to the student by email in the very first moment to make it really uh, easy. And then we, we just uh, move and see how things go. Um, um, I also discovered that some extensions go um, like come and, be, and and develop for for us to to deal with things such as the the, the hypothesis and so on, but and, and and they are mostly in trial. So those those are also um, should be in consideration that they are not extremely used or or, or like excessively used or they are not uh, really neglected so we're just in between um, using that those out like out resourcing tools to, to our browsers but what i know for sure and 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 this is very very true is that students are the um, source for us i mean every day there is a new tool every day there is an, a new accessible tool and every day there is, yeah, no matter how you're updated, students are more updated because they are, they are the ones who have the hands-on experience. I actually learn from them. I learn from my students. I don't, I, don't, I am not a, a, an accessibility tech technician, you know? So mm -hmm. what I know is I learn from my students. I, uh, of course, I attend a few conferences, but this is because this is my work. It's not the faculty's work. So this is where they go back to the student and, and the resource of, and as yes, I said, some students can use a, a few tools, others cannot use the same tool. I have a student um, uh, who is very good in touch screens and, and everything with the touch uh, mode. I have other students who cannot. I have a student who needs Braille. They, he, he actually wants to hold the Braille uh, the book in Braille, so it, yes. it, it, it it's very variable. Yeah, that's why I said variation always. Like student makes the variation that makes the best out of them. Yes, I agree. So, so there's speaking of that. Is it like I'm just gonna ask this question that the folks have uh, asked, and then I want to ask you a question for my own syllabus. But this one is: Does not being able to focus on online lessons is that is is that regarded as a disability? Yes, some some types of disabilities, they, I actually put it in even in the accommodations are not to concern are not to be exposed to screen time, a lot of screen time. They ah, cannot. I see what okay? you mean. So they need okay. to either. And this could be someone who doesn't have any other disability. What do you mean? Like this is this is someone who doesn't have something like ADHD that's already been known. It's something that no, the online be, learning environment no, it created could be any this neuro issue disability. For them. It could be because of um, uh, uh, of autism. It could be because of uh, uh, a certain uh, brain tumor. It could be uh, no. It could be any type of other. I think okay. I don't know what that person meant, but it sounds like that is the only thing that the person has. Is that a possibility that you don't have an, any other neurodivergent disability, but that that's the only thing that they cannot face computers? 
uh, they can't no they can't focus on online classes no, you can't focus on but online class be a disability very well because of ADHD. Uh, if there could be some other underlying learning difference. Yes. On its yeah. own, I don't think some, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's, it's again, it's uh, a So symptom. the question, it's what? It's, it's a, a symptom. symptom. Exactly. It's not necessarily a disability in and of mm -hmm. itself, yeah. So the, and it could be just because you're having a boring class. To be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the question that I have is um, is if we design our syllabi with options for students, is that already one way towards like giving students options in how they present their uh, their learning or in in what they read or watch to prepare for class? Does do those things go towards uh, you know more inclusive or more accessible classes? And if so, what are the general guidelines for that? In, like are there particular types actually, of options that are helpful? Actually, I like that because you give some uh, feeling of, of, of empowerment to the, to the students uh, in regards to their learning options. I like that very much. And, and giving the student an option of either doing a project or writing a paper or doing this in this way or doing that in that way is actually helping a lot the way the student approaches the material and understands the material of your class. Um, uh, one of the but the trickiness that... here will be yeah. that you have to make sure that the options are equivalent in regards to uh, uh, the difficulty of it. Yeah, and so, the learning outcome, of course. Yeah, and, yes, learning, go ahead. and attach to the learning outcome. Yeah. yeah, one of the one of the courses that I had uh, last semester to do that uh, was was actually they, they did it very well. Uh, it was an assignment of a film, a film documentary, and the students had to 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 make a, a documentary, a video, like a ten a ten minute. Uh, documentary about something uh, they chose. And, and the other option was a podcast. So the, the, the difficulty here was really equivalent. Um, the outcome also was, was equivalent as well. So we, they would create a, an, in, an interview just as a documentary. So mm -hmm. it's a perfect, it's, I'm, I'm highlighting that because it's a perfect example of, of how you can vary your options to, to, to make it uh, suit lots of people. It, it wasn't really for, 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 for people with visual impairment and disability only. I remember that the syllabus even included uh, hijabi people because if, if a hijabi girl would, would it like to, to appear with, with her hijab in the video. So that would be a, a good option for that. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good point. That's kind of a curb, curbside effect where you do something and it helps someone who wasn't on your mind. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's a couple. That of... was one of the questions from one of the faculty. How will I know that I'm including everybody? You don't have to know this. You know? Yeah, Just exactly. do it, and it will definitely yeah. fall into uh, yeah, its something. place. Yeah. yeah. But I also think, you know what, Sandra and the I think there's also an element of building trust in the class and letting students know that they can ask for other options, sure. yeah. even if they don't have a disability, actually. And I don't mind. I always tell my students, if you want to do it in a different format or a different way, let me know and we'll see if it fits, if it fits the learning outcomes and it's the same level of difficulty. Then Le usually flexibility, don't. the point of flexibility. Yeah. We yeah, don't have a lot yeah. of maha yeah. That being an ethos. We don't have a lot of maha. Sorry, say that again. We don't have a lot of math. <laughs> but uh, to be fair, I only teach one course. course. Yeah, I know, but I only teach one course. I think they have to teach three, so it feels maybe like it's a lot. And and also the material itself. Of course, some material is much harder. To, some material uh, like to, in to and labs and yeah, things are very yeah, difficult true. to uh, alternate the format for. Them. So someone uh, was asking, have I understood properly that recording on Panopto would be better for or easily accessible for visually impaired students as opposed to voice over PowerPoint or Loom, for example? Yes, sir, maybe. Sure. You, I know you've used all of these. Mm -hmm. Loom, Loom is not really the best to because the, all the buttons out there are not really identifiable. Like it always, it's always unlabeled. So I, I don't recommend Loom, but it's workable. Like uh, the person can can really work it out and, and press it on every button until the recording is played. But yeah, Panopto is really accessible. I, I, I tried it last semester ex extensively 
Um, it's also the point of taking notes by Panotto is really wonderful. I, I it's it's a very uh, good with timestamp, easy with the screen reader. And uh, I, I remember that uh, it also had Panopto also had shortcuts uh, that work with JAWS screen reader as well. So yeah, Panopto is good. Loom is not that that best, but if you have to, just you have to do it, and and make sure that your recording is short because the student will not be able really to navigate between each minutes and in, in, in the in the in the recording. It's, it's just play and post. Um, mm, uh, Google exactly. Uh, exactly. Google uh, Voice as well. Um, uh, Google Meet co uh, or Zoom recordings are very good if, if people would like to use it. Uh, Google Meet mm -hmm. uh, recordings. I but think not are... timed, right? Like you'd have to watch it. You just have to watch it in a row. It doesn't have like chapters, right? Well, like you can't. You can, you, can, you can identify it by yourself uh, in, in the description of that. Science. Ah, uh, you can identify the minutes if someone tells yeah. you. Uh, ah, yeah. so then the person who's sending you the video might need to tell you like this is a minute 10 or a minute yeah and if it's applied to if it's uploaded to youtube that you can you can chapter it okay yeah. yeah so you can chapter it manually yeah so this YouTube, is the next yeah. question someone's asking are links like youtube video links accessible for the visually impaired so they're sure. generally accessible and you can make them more accessible by putting in the chapters sure yeah um, even playlists are good if, if you can't make the chapters Play okay. playlists are good. Uh, so uh, having different videos as, as a playlist instead of one big video with chat. So yeah, yeah. Are we uh, getting and, them back? It's 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 uh, we have uh, only seven minutes. Yeah, it's almost time for them to come back. One and a half minutes. Okay. Uh, this one, how do I handle other abled students to understand others in their class groups may need accommodations? It's a good question, actually. It's different. So uh, it's about how to help the other students understand it. Well, I would say leave leave the students to the, like the point of flexibility in, in making group activities and make the student uh, be included um, in, in a blended environment without even fear. Like don't give the student the impression to to have the, the, the sense of that there is something different with us. No, they are not different. They are just with us, but they do their, their own stuff by different needs. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Dr. Sandra will, will have another insight. No, it's it's uh, it's the thing is, for me personally, I never got a student coming to me saying, why is this person getting blah, blah, blah. Mm. And if I get this question or if I get this look in their eyes that they're not, you know, skeptical, I would just say students get accommodations and this, these are, this is part of their accommodations. Mm -hmm. It's okay. no, the, I, I think the question addressed the point of dealing between the students and each other um, rather than assessment. Like, no, it, 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 I think it goes with saying, shall the faculty be involved in telling the other students that we're giving accommodations? Mm -hmm. That's what I understood. Yeah. I want them to understand, I think, which I'm not really sure what they meant by that. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe they just want them to understand that it's a difference, that there's difference. And, uh, but you're not going to stand and time. say, okay, in yeah, this class, exactly. We have so that's what I'm getting. We'll have accommodations get and get more time. Yeah. You're not going to like pinpoint and yeah. You don't want to very clear. Yeah, you're not going to do yeah, that. No, you don't want that. You have to, no. to make it um, naturally. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Hello. Just 20 more seconds and everything will be back from the breakout. So, so Noha and uh, Osama, are you happy to share at least one thing you talked about in your room since you guys came back first and then everybody else can share? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. give us one of the scenarios that you were dealing with. I know we have- So yeah, the scenario was a final project comprising, comprising an infograph. So how can we adjust it to um, blind students for, for blind students? And my suggestion was to add like uh, an audio summary for those students uh, using something like, uh, you know, Moat, there's a, like, an, like a tech tool called Moat that you can, 
it's like it creates a, a link to an, an an audio box where the students can just click that uh, uh, link and hear whatever you uh, whatever message you reported for the students so this is something that i usually use with some visually impaired students in my class um, so that the the visually impaired students can be able to read the infograph but then they will they hear a summary of no, 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 no. Oh, so the project here, okay, I see. So the project here means that they will create the infograph or they will read yeah. it and discuss it. So I, I'm curious, because this actually happened to ESR. Yes, so what did the professor do to accommodate this? Or was it a group uh, project? Well, it was a group project and that I put it for the sake of that reason. Um, in, in the case of creation, yeah, I agree with the voice recording that a student may explain if they were to do it, what they're gonna do. And this is really a good point that they visualize the infograph by their point, by their verbally, instead of going in the process. And that's what happened with me in the office. I ha I, I went to the professor and said, uh, so if I am created, I'll include this visual and this and this and this and this, and it it will include this. And, and we went into a reflection, a reflective discussion, rather than being a very uh, 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 like sophisticated uh, uh, tentative assignment. All right, thank you. Those are great idea. Thank you so much. Um, Alia and Nicola and Mustafa, would you guys like to share something that came out in your room? Just one of the things. Sure. Uh, dear teammates, do you have any preferences or do I go ahead and choose one random one? Nicola and Mustafa. I think we can just choose a random one and maybe just <laughs> let everyone read the what we came up with in, in the Okay. Talk. Okay, so uh, let's say, for example, we choose. Okay, let's go, for example, for this with a second one. A research oriented course has the students design an academic poster, suggest a well established suggest well established steps mm. um, to make it inclusive. So, of course, by the term inclusive, we mean involving everyone, all the team uh, mates together. So what we suggested was uh, step number one is to define the project's objective first. So what is this academic poster all about? What are the main objectives of it? What, what is the purpose of it? What's supposed to be achieved and so on. The second step is then to divide the tasks between the team members themselves and see you know, who wants to do what and based on their needs and their interests and their skills. And then the third step, since it's a research oriented course, is to conduct the research itself. And then the fourth step is to select the most relevant information that is to be presented on the academic poster itself. And then number five is to create the actual academic poster, putting all the information together, visuals where needed, and involving everyone in the group with all the work and effort they put in behind the scenes. And then the sixth and final step is to assign a presenter to illustrate or explain the poster. her voice disappeared it's just me yeah yeah uh, and in that uh, in that illustration we also said that this person was standing um behind like beside the poster would definitely play his uh, slash her role to either do audio descriptions or sign language interpretation if he knows so make sure that this person is aware of uh, some tips and techniques of um, reasonable accommodation for uh, like if we have uh, uh, pe people with, with impairment and actually in all of um, um, uh, like um, group work that assigned to um, our group we thought that you sometimes the adaptation may either include changing the poster or um, designing yeah um, either uh, changing the, the design or make it, um, for example, adding some text description to these visual illustrations, or maybe since we are in uh, working in groups, so those groups can do adaptation to each other and to the public, definitely, especially for those who are with uh, visual impairment, because sometimes you wouldn't be able to do not add uh, visual visuals to the poster, but what you can do is definitely adapt it in case of people can explain it to others as well um, if we have someone standing as present. I should say like I enjoyed working. I don't know like whether it is correct or not to be part of the working groups, but it's really interesting for me to work with uh, Nicola and uh, Ali as well. Thank you. 
they also mm -hmm. that uh, the steps that they mentioned really adapted all the needs because a visually impaired for example may 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 do the text tool may may choose what we included as a text and and by doing so they will not be really excluded they it's they contributed the, the poster they chose the text that the that will be included and they, they did their part another person who is good at designing can design another one can do uh, this and this and this and, and that will, will will lead us to the the final uh, over yeah and yes sir um, as you mentioned and here as well it's important to note that not because all of us visually impaired we we need the same tools of accessibility i can read braille you can use computer someone else can rely more on audio description a fourth person can maybe um, having kind of low vision so he can read kind of uh, like um, how you call it like a, a bigger a bigger writing with black and white things like that so like yes we are visually impaired but with different needs that should be accommodated as well um, um, definitely wouldn't only happen unless you ask people about their preferences thanks and i just wanted to say we have a session with dr mustafa Atiya this this thursday uh, it's called Nothing About Us Without Us. I'm going to put the yeah. link to it in the chat. <laughs> um, and I also put a link to give us feedback on the session because it's 2.02 and I think some people may need to leave. We haven't heard from the last group. Um, Sandra, Yasser, and the last group, do you guys have like three more minutes to maybe share up from the last breakout room one? And I'm going to put the link to the registration for Dr. Mustafa's uh, session. I don't know if Sandra and uh, Mustafa have met before. <laughs> So Senet, Virginia, and Nesma, do you guys want to share out from your group or do you have to go? I, I can. I, okay, go ahead, Virginia. Are you, okay. So um, the, in the first one, what we, um, and I guess we'll go over the first one because that's the one we spent the most time on, was within the syllabus, um, ensuring that um, the portfolio um, that students understood what needs to go in the portfolio to make it accessible. Um, and that we would also include sessions um, for those who, who needed um, extra work, who may have special needs, they could do that outside of the class. But also by having it within class, um, then they would have a better idea of what the um, um, what was required to make something accessible. Um, and we would go over that in class, what, um, including things like all alternative texts, um, um, if you have visuals, um, and it, it, just with the ensuring that the requirements for the portfolio um, included instructions on how to do the portfolio. That's sort of the short version of it, since we have. <laughs> that's 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 totally uh, understandable, and and um, what I had in that in that scenario is that the, I shared the portfolio with the instructor, so the instructor was a contributor in that in the portfolio. So if something is did wrong, we would have an office hour session that just to adjust what is being done wrong and to to ensure that everything is embedded correctly and all visuals are put in the correct places and, and all all of them are alternative text described uh, and so forth. Exactly, but also in, in terms of the class as a whole, so that the um, if there are people who have disabilities who haven't come forward, um, that everyone can access it, all of the classmates can access it also if you're sharing the portfolio or if it was going to an outside um, reviewer, um, that all students would have it in their portfolio that, that it's accessible for anyone who may have disabilities. So it's it's more of a generalized rather than having it specific to uh, one type of disability that might be one person in the class. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, thank you okay. all so much. Sandra, do you wanna wrap up? No, everything is fine. Thank you so much for coming today. I think uh, it was very useful to just open up and, and talk about things uh, in regards to accessibility. Okay, and I will send the recording to everyone.
Uh, so you'll hear uh, Sandra and Diaz's responses to the other questions that you asked that we weren't able to answer when everyone was here. Hopefully that will be helpful as well. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Yes, so much. And thank you all for joining Bye. us. Thank I you. hope some of you will join us on Thursday as well. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And have Bye. a lovely Bye. day. Bye. Bye. I'll stop the recording.